Hi folks, how's it going? Ho hope we're all keeping well. You're very welcome to lesson one of Leave and Search Geography in 2021. Um, today we're moving on to a brand new topic. It's actually the final, I suppose, topic on the course and it's the very final question on the Leave and Search higher level exam paper, the option question. Okay, and we're going to do the geoecology option, which focuses in on what's called a biome. OK, and we're going to look at, as you can see in front of you, the desert biome. OK, so what I've done is over the next uh, three weeks, OK, I'm going to go through how to answer this question. OK, there are three or four questions that come up on the desert biome every year in that 80 mark option section. And I'm going to go through how to answer the most common questions that come up. OK, um, it's a nice question that comes up, but there is quite a lot. So this is one big essay worth 80 marks. OK, your essays before this have all been worth about 30 marks. This essay is worth 80 marks, so it's quite long. OK, and there's quite a lot to learn off in this section. All right. But a lot of the information overlaps with it, uh, with each question. So it is uh, it is very doable and it's quite a nice question. If you if you're prepared for this, you, you, you will score very highly in it. I can guarantee you that. OK, so we're going to look at the most basic question, the, the probably the nicest question that comes up, first of all, when it comes to the desert biome. So question describe the characteristics of one biome you've studied. OK. Um, 80 marks. Okay, so the biome that we are studying is the desert biome. Okay, and in front of you there, you can see a little bit of a breakdown of how we answer this question. So, four and there's four aspects you must discuss, and each aspect is worth 20 marks. Okay, and you can see here the structure. So, how should this be structured? Well, you have an intro, okay, and um, where you define what a biome is, name a, a, a biome, and then give an example of where this can be found. OK, so um, in the intro, you'll notice I have no marks beside my intro. OK, now you will get marks for the intro. But what I, I want to I've also included in each of the paragraphs on climate, soils, flora and fauna, flora and fauna means plants and animals. And um, there's 20 marks. OK, so you should you know, you, you've, you've more than enough to get 80 and beyond 80 marks and more in this sample answer we're going to go through today. OK, now it's quite a long answer. We're not going to do it all today. We're going to do over or probably over the course of the week we'll we'll finish off this answer hopefully but today we're going to focus on the intro okay we're going to do the intro again the intro is nice and short and then we are going to look at climate okay we're going to look at a bit at climate we won't get all of climate done but we will look at most of it okay <clears throat> now i don't want you to take down notes in this lesson okay but I do have every so often I will ask you to pause the video and I'll, I'll put questions in on the slide in front of you and I want you to answer those questions. So I do want you to have your notes copy with you and obviously a pen or pencil or whatever. OK, and what you're going to do is you're going to pause the video and answer some quick revision questions on what was covered on the couple of slides before and then there'll be homework at the end. OK, but there's no I don't want you to take down all the, the, the notes of the PowerPoint. You can if you want, but it's not a requirement. Um, what I will do is I'll send you on these sample answers at the end of the week. OK, now, another thing is when I send, I want you to send me on a picture of your completed work so I can correct it. OK, so I want to as much engagement with you as possible. So I want you to take a clear picture of the questions you have done at the end of every lesson and send it to me. I'll have a quick, a quick look over them and make a few corrections or changes that need to be made. OK, also. I will be getting you to probably do uh, an essay every week. OK, hopefully it's only it's only till the end of January we're off. I'll be getting you to do an essay maybe on a Thursday or Friday. And I want that sent to me maybe by by Sunday or Monday and I will correct that and give it back to you. OK, so again, um, guys, very, very important. We do that and have those essays back to me. Remember, very, very strong chance there could be predicted grades again this year. So I need as much as many essays and as much as much pieces of work from you as possible so I can give you as fair a result as possible. OK, so back to our answer. So structure. OK, intro. Today we're going to look at the intro and we are going to look at part of climate. OK, so the introduction. OK, first thing we must do is define what a biome is. A biome is probably a new word for a lot of us. So a biome is an ecosystem or a community of animals and plants treated as a unit with their physical environment okay so basically guys a, 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 an ecosystem of animals and plants who are at one with their environment what does that mean well it means that the plants and animals are adapted specifically to survive in that environment okay 
there's a reason why, okay, you'll only find certain plants and animals in certain parts of the world. And that's because those plants and animals have adapted to live in their environment. Okay. For example, you won't find snakes in Ireland because snakes cannot survive in the ecosystem in Ireland. Okay. They can survive elsewhere though. All right. So a biome, an, eco an ecosystem or a community of plants and animals treat as a unit with their physical environment. So you can see here, the desert biome it's a very harsh environment so there's a very very few plants and animals living in here but those that do live here have um they have adapted to this environment okay the desert biome is on a global scale so the desert biome can be found all over the world okay now there is particular parts of the world it's found in but you can find a desert but you can find deserts in america australia africa and south america as well okay there are nine biomes in total on earth but we are focusing on the desert biome so there's other biomes that include like the rainforest and things like that we're looking at the desert biomes okay so desert biomes okay desert biomes have what are called arid soils arid just means extremely dry and lacking moisture okay so that's that's a picture of an arid soil there you can see how dry it is it's become cracked and damaged okay and desert biomes, you probably could, off the top of your head, you could probably come up with it yourself. These are the least productive biomes. And I think you can see why, okay? They're just so unbelievably dry. There's no moisture. It would be very difficult for any plant or animal to survive here, okay? Um, now, deserts can be improved through irrigation. Irrigation, the artificial watering of plants. If you fill up a watering can and go into your garden and water the flowers, that is a small scale irrigation. So in Egypt, for example, Okay, in Egypt, they have reclaimed desert land by irrigation schemes. They basically have massive sprinklers that, that, that are moved slowly across the desert and they water the, the land. And this, mean, this means that the, the, the arid soils or aridic soils, which are sometimes known, can support vegetation again. Okay, but this is only, uh, this can only be done um, with, with, with large scale, I suppose, investment in irrigation. Okay. Desert biome. The desert biome is characterized by sparse and intermittent rainfalls. What does sparse and intermittent mean? Well, sparse means that if you think of the word sparse, okay, food is sparse. There's not very much food, okay? If something is sparse, there's not very much of it. So there is very sparse and intermittent rainfalls, okay? So uh, there's very little rain and it's intermittent, okay? So it, it there's no, it's impossible to predict when it'll come, okay? It can come randomly. It might not come for years, okay? And as we know, the animals and plants of the biome must adapt to this drought. So if you want to survive in these conditions, you must adapt to this, okay? Now, what is a desert? So we, we mentioned a biome. A biome is a, an ecosystem or community of animals that are at one with its environment. And we've mentioned um, the desert. Well, what is a desert? Well, a desert is an arid region. Again, this word arid, an extremely dry region with no moisture, okay? A desert is an arid region characterized by little or no rainfall in which vegetation is scant or absent. Okay, so scant, again, another word for vegetation, there is very, very little of it or there is none of it whatsoever. Okay, unless specially adapted or where under uh, water conditions are favorable. Okay, so vegetation can only um, grow if it has a special adaptation. So if it's specially adapted, and we're going to look at how plants adapt uh, later on in this answer and in other answers or where there are some water conditions so some in some times you might find there may be a little spring or a small lake in some deserts but it's extremely rare okay now we must give an example now of where desert biomes can be found desert biomes can be found in north africa australia arabia central asia and south and west america okay so Again, if I go, uh, guys, at the start of the video, I said I wanted you to have your notes, copy, and a pen in front of you, and this is why you need it now, okay? So I want you to pause the video, and there are four short questions in front of you, okay? Um, so what I will do is I will get you to pause the video and answer th those four questions. They're just revision questions of what we've done in the previous couple of slides. And when you're ready, press play, and we'll continue on with the video. So we've finished our introduction uh, into the desert biome. We are now going into our second paragraph, which is on climate. Okay, and we're going to talk a little bit about location as well. Now we're not going to do all of the location and climate today, but we're going to do part one of it. Okay, so where can deserts be found? Deserts are found on the western side of land masses. Okay, 
So generally they're on the western side of land masses, okay? Um, why is this the case? Well, they're close to cold ocean currents, okay? Now, cold ocean currents are generally towards, like if you look here, okay, the Pacific Ocean here, the Atlantic Ocean here, okay? Um, these are these are to the west of land masses, okay? And these oceans often bring cold ocean currents. And what does cold ocean currents mean? Well, a cold ocean current, oceans control the temperature around them, okay? Uh, and a cold ocean current will bring cold air, and cold air cannot hold much moisture, okay? So these cold land masses, when they do come in and reach, sorry, these cold air mass, uh, cold ocean currents, they cause the air to be cold, and this cold air cannot hold much moisture. Warm air can hold moisture, but cold air cannot. So when these, um, when this air reaches land, Okay, it is not carrying any moisture, therefore it will not bring rainfall on land. Okay, so if it does rain, it'll rain out at sea. Okay, so again, deserts are on the western side of land masses close to cold ocean currents, such as the Canaries Current. Okay, these cold ocean currents will bring cold air. What we know by cold air, we know cold air cannot hold much moisture so it will not bring rainfall okay so this means that any rain that does fall falls out at sea rather than over the land okay so these these areas these desert areas get no rainfall okay where else can they be found well they're found we know on the western side of land masses they are also found between 15 and 30 degrees north and south of the equator okay as a result of this latitude, the region receives a lot of direct sunlight. So they're very near the equator. The sun shines directly on the equator. Because deserts are so near the equator, that means that they get a lot of direct sunlight. And what will this bring? This will bring unbelievably hot weather, okay? Particularly during the daytime, okay? Because the sun is directly overhead, okay? Again, if you if you had a, a, a light, okay? If you put your hand directly below a, um, a bulb, okay? your hand will get hot very quick, all right? Whereas if you move your hand, you moved your hand away from it, okay, to, to the right of the bulb, you would not experience the same level of intense heat, okay? Because deserts are very close to the equator, they receive a lot of direct sunlight, okay? Now, because of this combined with lack of cloud cover, it means that there is a high gerinal temperature range, okay? What is this? Gerinal temperature range is essentially the difference between the coldest and the warmest temperature experienced, okay, over the course of a day, all right? And the gerinal temperature range is high. It can be up to about 40 or 50 degrees, okay? So in a desert, deserts are unbelievably hot during the day, but at nighttime when the sun sets, the main heat source is gone. The sun is no longer there. As a result, there's a high gerinal temperature range. So a desert might be 40 or 50 degrees Celsius during the day, maybe at, at midday, but at night time, the sun is gone, the main heat source is gone, so the temperature can drop to maybe minus 10, okay? So as a result, there's a high gerinal temperature range because of this, okay? So to recap over the previous slide there, guys, so if you think about it, deserts are on the western side of land masses. Why is this? Because the western side of land masses are near cold ocean currents. Cold ocean currents bring cold air. Cold air cannot hold moisture so it does not rain as much on the western side of some of these land masses okay where else can they be found about 15 to 30 degrees north and south of the equator what does this mean well this means that they are under the they're nearly directly under the sun okay they get a lot of direct sunlight so this means that they get a lot of intense heat during the day now what happens during at night time when the sun disappears well if the main heat if you turn off the light in your room okay, there's no heat coming from that light, as a result, the temperature drops dramatically, okay, what does it drop to, it could drop from 50 degrees at maybe one o'clock in a day, to maybe minus five or 10 degrees in the middle of the night, this results in a high gerinal temperature range, okay, so location and climate part two, there is no cloud cover, so if you look here guys, the picture, there is no clouds in most deserts, where do clouds come from? Well, clouds come, for clouds to appear, there must be water present. There must be an ocean or there must be a big lake or some kind of water present or a river, okay? What happens? Well, this water in Ireland, for example, when it rains, okay, this can happen because warm weather will cause water and lakes and rivers to evaporate, 
okay, this will rise when it gets higher, it cools and condenses and forms clouds, okay? Now you might think, how come it doesn't happen in the desert? Because it, it's very hot in the desert, surely there's lots of evaporation. Well, the reason why it doesn't happen in the desert is because there is no water to evaporate. If you look here, okay, there's no lakes, there's no rivers, it's far away from an ocean. So as a result, there is no water to evaporate and as a result, there's no cloud cover, okay? Under the influence of high pressure belts, Air is warmed while returning to the equator. Warm air can hold more water vapor than cold air, but these winds are dry. So there's high pressure, which, which, which results in warm air, okay? And warm air can hold moisture. But the problem is, is where does this moisture come from? There is this, this in Ireland, if warm air comes to Ireland, it picks up moisture from, say, the Atlantic Ocean and from, and from rivers and lakes, Okay, but there is no oceans here, there is no rivers, there is no lakes. So this warm air does not pick up any moisture, so it results in really, really warm, really dry air. Okay, um, again, as you said, the absence of surface water, what do we mean by this? We mean lakes, rivers, etc. Um, in the regions means that no clouds develop. So the air is warm, warm air would cause evaporation, but no clouds. It's the same, guys. If you if you have your kettle, if you turn on your kettle at home, but there's no water in it, there's going to be no evaporation. Okay. So there's heat. There's heat in the kettle, but there's no water to evaporate. Okay. So no clouds develop as a result. <clears throat> because of this, rainfall is infrequent. Okay. So it happens very in. If something happens frequently, it happens quite a lot. If something happens infrequently, it happens very very rarely. Okay. Now. When rain does fall, it happens in violent convectional rainstorms, okay? And this is a problem because when rain does fall, <clears throat> it happens all at once, okay? And because it happens all at once, it means that there could be maybe two, 300 millimeters of rainfall over the course of a couple of days. This can waterlog the soil, and this, this is bad as well, okay? The soil becomes waterlogged, and sometimes it can actually cause some flooding because the soil, if you think, right, the top layer of soil in the desert becomes literally baked by the sun and it becomes a really hard layer. It's something called a hard pan that's impermeable. Water cannot pass through it and this can result in flooding. Okay, so deserts receive between zero and 500 millimeters of rainfall per annum, okay, or per year. Okay, again, some, if it does receive three or 400 millimeters of rainfall, this can often come all at once causing flooding, okay. So because there's no clouds, it means there's no rain and that results in drought, okay? Why is there no clouds? There's no clouds because <clears throat> there is no water. There's no water to absorb moisture from and evaporate, okay? So folks, <clears throat> what I want you to do now is for your homework, okay? Again, you had questions to do earlier on in the lesson. You have more questions to do now. Pause the video and answer the five questions in front of you, okay? <clears throat> Obviously, you can rewind the video if you need. And please, please email me on a picture of your work for correction. Thanks a million, folks. Thanks for tuning in. We will have a live lesson tomorrow, which I have scheduled for you on Microsoft Teams. So look forward to hearing from you all then. Okay, take care, folks, and see you tomorrow.